Imposter syndrome is a common experience that many artists of all levels face. It's a feeling of inadequacy, self-doubt, and the belief that one's accomplishments are undeserved or that they are somehow faking it. It's the feeling that whatever you achieve pales in comparison to others. It's the irrational focus on the one negative comment in a sea of praise. It's the fear that no matter how well you're doing, someone would expose you as a fraud. It's a fear that can lead to creative paralysis and can be self-destructive for your art journey. I've got a discussion with a subscriber on Patreon about this, and to be honest, I struggled with imposter syndrome as well in the past, so it was pretty relatable for me. It's pretty common, especially for self-taught artists, because you don't have the legitimacy of a reputable art school to back you up. The number one thing I like to start with when it comes to imposter syndrome is how it's actually not such a bad thing. It's not that bad to feel that you can never learn enough. At least it's much better than feeling that you know it all and have nothing to learn because we're always learning. A lot of people are actually ignorant and yet they think that they're amazing. And imposter syndrome at least protects you from being a fool and thinking that you're a genius. If you always feel perfectly satisfied with your current self, you never start learning. Feeling incomplete is the trigger for self-improvement. And in fact, it's the trigger for creation. Each new painting is an attempt at filling a hole in someone's life, tell a new story, paint a new picture to make the world a more beautiful place. It's quite normal for artists to experience imposter syndrome. We are just not good enough for the incredibly hard art that our imagination wants to make. I don't know about you, but every time I finish a painting, even a painting that I'm happy with, I say to myself, now the next one will have to be even better. And to be fair, I'm pretty sure that I'm not capable of achieving what I have in mind because better than pretty much the best that I can do is very difficult. And regarding imposter syndrome, that's where creative paralysis can strike. The best way to avoid this paralysis is to understand that being an imposter is part of being an artist. You're always an imposter in the eyes of your next work. You are never good enough before you start. You need to feel goofy and incapable because in fact, you are before you start. But once you start painting, you transform yourself. You get to the level that your work requires to paint better than yesterday. See, imposter syndrome is not destructive if it's between you and your work. If it's between you and other artists, then it's toxic, it's destructive, whatever you want. You know, if it's about comparing yourself to others, about complaining that others are better than you, then obviously it rarely produces anything positive except if you like competition, but art is not just about competing with others. It's really difficult to see the world of art as a big competition. Art is not about competing with others, but about competing with yourself to surpass yourself with each new painting. And this feeling, this imposter syndrome, it's your imagination calling for something greater, requiring that you become better. Not better than other artists, but better than the artist you were yesterday. Transforming imposter syndrome into a personal call for improvement will help you deal with self-doubt. It will turn self-discipline into an ability to deal with the social and, and parasocial aspects of imposter syndrome, facing people and, you know what we don't like, listening to them talk about your art in a negative way. 
Turning imposter syndrome into self-improvement will help you dismiss the negative comments you might hear from people. Some people might think that your art is bad and call you a joke, but it doesn't matter because that's just a side effect of showing your art to more people. If your art is seen millions of times, which I certainly wish for you, you'll necessarily hear tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of negative comments, but it's actually a good sign. What's not a good sign is to hear only positive things about your art, but like very little about it. It means that you're still in your small protective bubble, only showing your art to people who care about you. But you need to take the risk go out there. Maybe a thousand people will just walk by, not even look, or even worse, find your art ugly. But maybe just one person will resonate with what you do. Understand the story you want to tell and find it beautiful. Only one person, that's all you need. And I often say that it's your responsibility as an artist to make art for this person. You're just not allowed to leave the world more ugly and meaningless than it was before you came in. Even if your art is a very, very small contribution to this immense task, even if it's just beautiful for this one person, it's worth it. I'm just going to finish with some strategies to help you deal with imposter syndrome as an artist. Recognize that it's common. Understand that imposter syndrome is not unique to you. Many successful artists and professionals, regardless of their levels of skills or achievement, they experience these feelings every day. Knowing that, knowing that you're not alone can help normalize this experience and and alleviate some of the self-imposed pressure. Second strategy, embrace the process. Focus on the art of creating rather than solely on the final outcome. Recognize that making mistakes and encountering challenges are natural parts of the artistic and creative process. Allow yourself to experiment, explore, and learn from each painting regardless of the end result. Emphasize the joy of expressing yourself through art and enjoy the journey more than the result. Journaling can help. Write down your thoughts, express how you feel about each new improvement in your studio, or even better, use your art as a platform for journaling. Use daily painting or have a sketching routine that's not necessarily meant to be shown, but is just there to make you feel inspired and motivated to keep going every day. Third strategy is celebrate your achievements. Take the time to acknowledge and celebrate your artistic achievements, no matter how small or big they may be. Keep a record of your progress, such as a portfolio, a journal, where you can reflect on your growth as an artist. It's all about the process. It's all about the journey. Remind yourself of all the challenges that you had to overcome up until this point and embrace the continuous learning. Remember that art is a journey of personal growth. Instead of focusing solely on comparing yourself to others, shift your mindset towards continuous learning and continuous self-improvement for you as an artist, improving your technique, improving your workflow, improving your process. Treat each artwork as an opportunity for exploration and experimentation rather than putting yourself under pressure as a means of achieving perfection for every new painting. You're perfecting yourself, not your art necessarily. Fourth strategy is to express your feelings. Feeling doubt as an artist is normal. You'd be surprised how many artists feel discouraged and doubt themselves. You can talk openly about your feelings. Whatever happens, nothing wrong can come from expressing what you feel with honesty. Sharing your struggles can not only help you connect with others who may be experiencing similar emotions, but it can also provide support and encouragement for those who may look up to you as an artist. 
your art is also a great platform for those feelings. These emotions might have their place in your paintings. Final one, think small. If you feel stuck, begin with small, manageable projects or exercises that don't feel overwhelming. We often say think big, be ambitious, but what if the key to unlock your true creative side is to start small? If you're just beginning, it's normal to be afraid to paint simply. So don't start with a huge ambitious project, start with something manageable. This will help you build confidence gradually and reduce the pressure to produce a masterpiece right away. It's not possible. A masterpiece is the work of a lifetime. So set achievable goals, celebrate your progress and recognize that improvement comes with practice and persistence. Overcoming imposter syndrome takes time and self-reflection. Remember that your value as an artist is not determined by external validation, but by the personal fulfillment and joy that art brings you. Embrace your unique artistic voice and have confidence in your ability, because despite all the difficulties, you'll make it somehow.